Ireland have dominated all the action on the field so far this season, but it's off the field where they've made some headlines this week. Joe Schmidt is uh, calling it a day on his coaching career after 2019. What do you guys make of that? I'm unsure yeah. whether or not he is, or he's just playing it done. It's one of them, isn't it? As he said, I'm never coaching again. No. But obviously, his pathway is now... We all know, and I think the obvious thing is to say... 2019 World Cup, he finishes there, whatever happens. And the natural progression is a Kiwi. Hansen's going to come to the end at some point. I'm and going home. Get, he's going home with his family. And oh, by the way, the All Blacks job's up for grabs. He can't say, I'm going for the All Blacks job because mm. Steve Hansen supposedly hasn't made his decision yet. And it's that whole political warfare game of who's going where, what's going to happen. The Lions also need a top guy for the tour in. South Africa in 2021. So, you know, he's basically saying to both of them, British Lions or the All Blacks. Or England. Yeah, you never know. But he's the best, you know, his achievements, what he's achieved with Ireland in the, what's he been there, five, six years? Mate, he's been a... Phenomenal. Class above. Yeah. Class above the world. So as a coach, you can, you're naming your price for any team. He's He's a New Zealander, so he can get the All Blacks job. He's coached Ireland. He came to get the British Lions job because he's got all the knowledge there. England are going to need someone after Eddie Jones. They've got bags of cash. They could say, hey, offer him the job. And it's like any person in any walk of life. Job offer gets put in front of you. You look at it. And apparently England tried to get Andy Farrell, but uh, he's he's going to be the next Ireland coach, obviously, um, taking over perfect succession planning. Yeah, we signed for four years, and he, he's then head coach for Ireland through to the 2023 World Cup. So... It's very sensible by Ireland to lock him in now. He's it's also very different being head coach to defence coach. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a it big is. step. But in every environment Farrell's been in, as a defensive coach, people you speak to, he does more than that. Yeah. So he's massively integral to everything that goes on. So, And, you know, the next year he's going to learn everything off Joe Schmidt, looking at it going, right, this is now my job. What am I going to take from Joe Schmidt that I want to continue? What do I want to change slightly and put my print handprint on it? And what do I want to get rid of? So, you know, it's perfect from the RFU to do that. And you think of succession plans. I think for me, that's where the RFU have let themselves down. The IRFU have done pretty well. Yeah, and while we're on Ireland, um, clean sweep, coach of the year, team of the year, and Sexton, of course, uh, world player of the year. No real surprise. Yeah, well, I there. called it, didn't I? Oh, I said, I said the Sexton was going to get it. You said Faf de Klerk, hands down. No, I said I wanted Faf de Klerk. No, you didn't. After the, no, no, this Jim. was before they beat the All Blacks. Jim, Jim, Jim. We so, all called it. I said Sexton, you said Faf. Okay, I wanted Faf. Okay, we got Sexton. Sexton Fair deserves call. it. What about his interview? He couldn't speak. He's lost his voice. Is that because he's still absolutely steaming? I think so. After beating the All Blacks. But he had a throat infection, so he couldn't actually speak. But yeah, he deserves it. Listen, he's been unbelievable. Um, as has Big Devon Toner. He has talked him up a storm since the podcast started. He ain't followed me yet. I've just keep checking his social media. He's not been on Twitter. 17 wins on the spin for Big Dev. Yeah, all right. 